Controlling all of your components is often more difficult than hooking them up. Make it easy on yourself with the fourth thing you must know. Simple remotes prevent colossal headaches. Uh, you want to make sure that when you're finished your theater, you have something that's going to help you run this efficiently and gives you a lot of enjoyment and makes it simple. Uh, you pick up a remote, you don't want to have to fumble through different buttons and settings. There are a lot of different remotes out there and most, most of them these days allow one button operation. So if you pick up that remote and you hit TV, everything's going to happen down to dimming the lights if you have the correct controller in the room for the lights. When it comes to home theater or whole house audio, um, there are many different types of control solutions. Um, from, I would say most people nowadays are looking for a single remote where they can control all of their devices as well as automate the processes. Well, there's quite a wide range. Uh, you can pick up something, a uh, basic universal remote, which will run your television and your DVD player, or the cable box, or whatever. And that, that might go for $100 or so, maybe, you know, a little more or less. And then there are the elaborate remotes out there that actually sit on the coffee table with a two-way touch screen that's actually going to give you information back. So it would tell you what channel you're on, show you the volume level of your receiver, your equipment. Codes can make getting to know your remote complicated. Luckily, you can look to your home computer for a little assistance. There may be codes, for example, that your display can actually accept that your original remote does not contain. It may be able to go to video one or video two, yet your remote doesn't have that button. So ideally, what you are looking for is a remote that is a PC programmable remote with the ability uh, to learn as well. This will make programming your, your macros, which are what automates everything, much easier. And again, there are many support forums out on the internet for these types of remotes where you can pick up tricks from other people who will, you know, have solved problems you're running into. Home theater equipment is a sizable investment and it should be treated with the proper respect. It's the third thing. Give your components room to breathe. One of the things that many people forget is that their electronics produce heat and if they get too hot, bad things happen to the equipment. Um, for example, with front projection, most projectors require that in every single direction that they have approximately 18 inches of breathing room. So if you're looking to conceal the projector that's up there in the ceiling, hanging from the ceiling, you need to keep things like that in mind. Um, if you are looking to stick all of your components, your DVD player, your AV receiver into a built-in cabinet, it's not a bad idea to put a louvered bed or dressy things. You can even drill holes in a pattern to give an attractive finish to a built-in cabinet. If you're planning on using a projector in your home theater setup, you've got to make sure you have the proper room to accommodate it. It's the second thing. Projectors and natural light don't mix. Well, most of the projectors would perform best in a dark room. If you have a little bit of ambient light, uh, you just try to make sure that it's not directly reflecting on the screen. That's going to wash out the picture a bit. But if it's towards the rear of the room, a lot of the projectors out there these days are bright enough to handle that. Where it'll give you still a pretty good picture, but all in all, the darker the room, the better the picture's going to look. You know, if you can have a room that's dark, you know, that's good. But not extreme dark, but even a room with um, a window, but nice drapes that block it out. And if you missed anything, just log on to DIYNetwork.com for a complete list of the 10 things you must know, as well as additional tips from our experts. Coming up next, our experts show you a clever way to hide the power cord for your new television. You don't want to miss this when 10 Things returns. to 10 things you must know. Our number one is coming up, but first let's take a quick look at numbers 10 through two. Number 10, sound loves a rectangle. A square room not only sounds better, it looks better too. Number nine, soundproof as much as you can. 
Installing sound panels will eliminate the echo and enhance your overall sound. Number eight, keep your TV out of the corner. Putting your screen in the corner of the room makes it difficult to position your speakers. Number seven, the receiver is the brain of your system. Make sure you choose a receiver that fits your power and function needs. Number six, surround yourself with speaker vernacular. Make sure you know the lingo before you start to shop. Number five, wire yourself some quality sound. Thicker speaker wire ensures your other electrical work won't interfere with your sound. Number four, simple remotes prevent colossal headaches. Look for a remote that can control all of the devices in your home theater. Number three, give your components room to breathe. Electronics get hot. Make sure yours have enough space to keep cool. Number two, projectors and natural light don't mix. If you're using a projector, block out as much light as you can. If you bought a TV that hangs on the wall, don't forget that it needs to be plugged in. Find out the clever way to get it power in the number one thing you must know. Put an outlet for plasmas and LCDs where you can't see. Before the sheetrock goes in, you also want to make sure that all of your electrical work is done. If you are going to have a front projection system, projector on your ceiling, you need to plug it in. It's nice to have an outlet up there ahead of time. Scenario two is uh, how, you, how would you install your equipment in a retrofit application. Uh, this is, generally speaking, much trickier because you may not have been around when that room was constructed. So what do you have behind the walls? Do you have electrical wiring you need to be concerned with? Um, do you have metal studs or wood studs? If you're not completely comfortable doing electrical work, be sure to call in a professional. I always recommend getting an electrician to put an outlet behind the television. Uh, just for safety reasons, fire hazards, you don't want to put any electrical in the wall. Uh, the other wires are low voltage wires, so there's no risk of, you know, of course, starting a fire with a, a component table. That's it. The 10 tips straight from our experts on how to install a home theater system. Join us next time with 10 things you must know. Okay, this is Ed Titus from the Home Channel Network. I uh, just want to show you something about those um, 10 things she talked about. The last thing about hiding, you know, your power cord source and everything like that. I don't have my projector yet, but... I do have a power source ready for when it's plugged up in the ceiling. I want to show you this. Also note that I did go to Home Depot. I talked to an electrician. I used to work at Home Depot, and he basically walked me through what I need to do to run the wires in the wall and stuff like that. But if you don't know what you're doing, please hire an electrician. Let's be safe out there. Let me show you this real quick. Right there in the corner, I don't know if you can make it out. Well, you see that light is? It's a cord that goes down to my receiver. It has two plugs up there. And from my um, power conditioner, I'm going to plug my um, projector in my power conditioner. And you see this right there? My projector goes right there. So I'm ready to go for the new year. As soon as the um, I get my tax money back, I'll show you the projector, and that's it. Thank you.